Well, welcome to our control room. Um, we're about two flights up in our auditorium, uh, directly above the doors when you enter. So kind of give you a, a rundown. Um, we actually had a really cool opportunity to really start from scratch in this space because there wasn't a whole lot of TLC from the beginning here. About two years ago, we had um, no glass in here. Uh, actually, about a year ago, actually, we had no glass. There was no carpet. It was uh, that cheap kind of um, vinyl flooring, which is fine for like a home, but when you have a high traffic area, it didn't last at all. And we had a particle board desk that was flexing. Um, and so, and then cables just kind of everywhere. So really cool opportunity to do it right. And I'll show you some of the things we uh, were intentional about, but. We'll break it down to the station. So over here we have Lighting Land. Uh, we are running Jan's Vista. And with everything, we try to be good stewards. So um, this computer is actually probably about seven years old, I think. And it used to be our graphics computer and then it got demoted to lighting. So uh, if it works, we use it. Um, so um, we're using Vista for our lighting software with the, the 1M, the used to be Jan's, now it's a Chroma Q Vista. Uh, if you're doing lighting from today, I would not do this. This is about $1,000 for this, plus $500 for the software, plus the computer. I would use LightKey. It's an amazing Mac tool. It's like 90 bucks, works great, but this was already in the works um, before I came on board. So and at that time, it was really was the best option in terms of budget. So, but if you're, unless you're doing anything crazy, um, LightKey would be the way to go. Moving on, we have graphics. We recently upgraded a Pro Presenter 7 to make things so much simpler. Um, we used to use Pro 6, and we actually had to have not one, not two, but three computers to run our graphics. And the reason for that was we had these three screens using a triple head to go, that was one machine. We had pastor's TV and back wall, that was another machine. And then we had a lower thirds for broadcast, that was another machine. And Pro 6 is really limited. So we upgraded to Pro 7. Um, and then we got this guy here, which has five uh, outputs. And then we have this alpha key here, which does our lower thirds and it all does, gets ran right from ProPresenter right there. So uh, this guy down here probably looks really cool. Um, these are just, this is just a control surface to talk to our video matrix. If you don't know what a video matrix is, um, think of like the AV receiver you might have at your home where you have a bunch of HDMI ins and you know, maybe an output to your TV, except Rather than it being HDMI, it's SDI, and rather it being one output, it's 40 inputs and 40 outputs. So every projector, every computer out input, every camera input, everything goes into the matrix and it lets us route things. So if you notice on Sunday when Steve's TV is black, it's actually not off. It just, we're just sending a black signal as one of our inputs, we have a black signal. And if I wanna route uh, the purpose under signal to it, I just click this button and then take it, and then now his TV would appear to turn on. It was on the whole time, it just had a black signal up, so I can now do that. And that's, we can program those to do anything. Uh, moving on, we have a phone. Uh, this is useful for talking to downstairs. We can also call our student room if we have a multi-room event going on. And this also acts as a comm system of sort. So if I click audio, you might not be able to hear, but there's a phone ringing in our audio room over there. And that's how we can talk to each other. So as the video director or as the graphics director, I can pick up and call them and they can call me. And then also we have one at front of house. So we can ring in front of house. It does not actually ring the phone. It just flashes the light though, since they're in service. Um, this is a much cheaper system since we already had a phone system versus installing something like ClearCom. Um, so that, that's a good solution. Security radio for talking to our, our sheriff's office officer that we have on site. And then here is Video World. So this is where we mix video from. Um, this is just a control surface though. Actually, there's only one cable plugged into this thing and it's this guy, it's a POE cable. It's all powered over the network. Um, I'll plug that back in. And so um, this guy is how we uh, switch cameras. So um, before, while well, this turning back on, I probably should not have unplugged that. I'll explain what's happening up here. So this monitor right here is our multi-view monitor. We have preview program meters there. It just says the director I like to see. Make sure we have audio flowing. Cameras one, two, three, four, five, as well as stage display. So if I actually if I open up Pro Presenter here. Let it spin. I tried to run this on a Mac Mini, even the new ones, and it would not work. We had to use an iMac. Um, but I'll go ahead and just fire up uh, one of the slides here. Sweet, okay, cool. 
So now you can see I have graphics coming in. That's just the left screen. So we can, that, that literally is a copy of that. And that's how we can take a graphic and put it on broadcast. And then right here I have uh, words. And I also have the clock there. If a video rolls, I get a blue clock. And that's super helpful because as the video director, I can see how much time is left. Obviously we're never perfect with the clock, but we try to be. Um, and I have no idea what music is playing right now. But if I roll a video, so I'll just roll, this is announcements. You see I can, ha you see I have actually a, a timer there, which is really nice. Let me get that off. All right, so, uh, yeah, way I can I can select the camera, so I'll choose camera one. And if I want to take that camera, I can either use the T-bar to take the camera, which is this guy here. I can use the cut button. Um, and then I can also uh, use the transition button. I can do titles. So um, we actually have media players built in to the switcher. So I can do media players. I can go to media player four, I think. Yeah, so four is, and then I can do, I'll switch it back to that. If I hit this button here, I have a key here built in, and I can just, boop, title away. And I actually have more than one, so if I, if I leave this on, I can spin this knob here, and you'll see, as I spin the knob, it changes. So, yeah, there's graphics, so it, we use that a lot. Uh, the second one here, or the first one, rather, is actually for our lyrics. So if I go to Pro Presenter and I hit a lyric, this guy sends that to the switcher, and you can see I have that, which would normally be on the left and right screen, and then I have my lyrics there. And if for whatever reason, if I need to turn that off, I can just hit this button, but really, we never have to worry about that, so we leave that on. All right, I only have one camera on, camera one on, but we'll move over to here, and this is our shading position. So this is where how we make the cameras look pretty. Um, and again, right here, I have a control panel, so I can choose what I want. I wanna to go to camera one right now, so I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna put labels here, but we're still playing with the configuration. And I can see camera one in all of its glory. And then right here is shading. So this is exactly where I'm gonna make, uh, make the cameras look how I want them. Now, you notice that the number one here is red. That means it's actually on air. So if we were streaming, we would not wanna edit the camera that's on air. We always try to do a camera that's not on air. But I can adjust the brightness with this lever here. Um, I can use these meters over here to help me kind of get it where I should put it up. And then I can also change the DB. You know, if you're familiar with DSLRs or Canons or Sonys, uh, this is basically your ISO. So we just call it DB in broadcast world because it's actually the technical term. Um, and just like ISO, it comes up in steps. So bring it back down. And zero is the native ISO of the camera. We run at about six here. I can change colors. Basically, the objective of this position is really to make all the cameras look consistent with each other. We're not always great at that. You can definitely catch that. Uh, this is something that sometimes the director will do as well. But we always like to have someone who's dedicated to this position if possible. Um, and then we also have comms here. So this is just uh, the Hollyland comm system. Uh, this is way less expensive than ClearCom and it's wireless. It definitely has its disadvantage over ClearCom, but for just doing video, it's great. We actually have, can do up to eight packs, um, so eight wireless. And then this guy connects over our cable to this one and this position and that position are both wired in. And they have these pretty great headsets. My favorite feature is you flip this forward, it's unmuted, you flip it back and you're muted. So it's pretty great. And you got an ear open so you can hear the room and that's all one channel. We're actually adding some equipment, moving some equipment here which is why it's a mess right here. But um, if we come over here to our last position uh, with our social media position. So this is just a Mac mini. This one's about seven years old uh, and we use it to run social media. So the commenting, uh, the responding to people, answering questions all happens from this position. Although we actually haven't been utilizing it a whole lot for that. It's also great, you know, there's those things, hey, I need to look at the order service here. Can I look at the time? Or, hey, I need to print some sheet music. This is a great machine to run to just to do those things without having to bother someone else and kind of, you know, take that, get in their way. So this is a great computer for that. And I have one of the covers off, you can see right here, but a big design requirement for me when we had to build this uh, booth was to have cable management. That'd be just to be clean, but not just clean, but also useful. It doesn't matter that it looks clean and out of the way if I want to replace a cable or install a new part and I have to take everything apart. So that's where this came in. We have these troughs that are um, were built. And cool story about this, we actually had someone in our church who does carpentry professionally who gave us a really good price when he built all of this. And so he built this, you know, these are made out of real wood. And the insane thing about that 
is uh, if you look online at broadcast equipment, you know, that, that is built for, you know, big control rooms, they are ridiculously expensive. You're talking about a piece of furniture this big could cost $10,000 uh, because it has rack mount stuff and it has cutouts and all the things, but it's made out of particle board. This is real wood. You can see the wood under here. And then we got these X legs on Amazon because it looks pretty cool. And we built this little five inch box back here. This runs the whole way. And I can show you an area where there's a little more density of cabling. Um, and it runs to our server room. You can see we bundle things together. It's, it's not beautiful, but it's, it is serviceable. That's what we care about. It has to be serviceable. Um, all the SDI comes in here. And then that leads us to our server room, which is right here. This is where the magic happens. You were asking about how we get cables up here. Well, they all come in through those pipes. We actually installed those pipes, um, my team did. Um, and we bring in all the green cable you see, that's all SDI. So one for each camera to bring video in. And then we actually send one back out to do camera control. So when I'm you know, moving those uh, knobs for on the shading position, I'm actually talking over the, to the camera over one, another one of those cables. At the blue is just network or security cameras and other network points in the room. And we installed this ladder and we actually did hire contractors, not a company, but contractors come in just do the dressing and pull with some of the cable because they do a great job at it. Um, and then there's that pass through that goes into the server or into the into the trough right there on the other side of the wall. A little battery for all the battery backup for all the equipment in the booth. Um, and this is everything that goes in the booth that you see right here. There's no other cables that go in there. So uh, cable goes over here, there's AC in here, uh, and this is our network rack. So this actually isn't just for, um, like I said, you know, this server room was built not just for in this room, but really this half of the building. This is all of our network, um, servers, we have a video storage server batteries at the bottom. But what I'm sure you're interested in is over here in video land. So the very top is just a DMX splitter. These are SD card recorders. Um, and then, um, oops, I did not mean to trip on that cable. Um, but Pro tip, always make sure that you keep uh, cables free of your server room. We're actually getting ready to take these out. These are the old cables and so are these and replace them with the new SDI. We just have to terminate that. But we're gonna try that again. So uh, in here, we have our switcher, uh, which is right here. So this is the device that actually is cutting the camera. So when we talk, you know, use that box over that, that panel there to actually take cameras and pull the lever, we are doing that um, here. So. Um, using this box. Um, and then this is our matrix. And I told you all the inputs, all the outputs come into here. So all of our cameras come here first and they get routed to here. And that way, that's how I can, from the other position where I'm shading, I can take that camera and then uh, mix it in video or shade or whatever. And then from there, after the video is mixed, this is also where it's combined with audio. We'll talk about audio in a minute. It then goes to the encoder. Now the stream is as easy as clicking. Yeah, I got focus lock there is clicking this on air button and that sends it right to Subsplash. Um, that's an important piece, let me tell you. We were using OBS until we got that guy and having a stream that, getting streaming is easy, streaming reliably is really hard, making it work every time. This box has been awesome. I would say we do have really good internet here, we have fiber. If you don't, look into Resi. Uh, they have a really awesome protocol that works even if your internet is a little flaky, if your internet cuts in and out. If our net cuts out even for a second, our stream's down. So this works for us, but it may not work for you and your environment. Uh, these are just audio consoles for the band to mix their ears. And then for audio, the real meat and potatoes, the magic sauce that we have is Waves. And that's what does all of our, it's so basically a DAW for our audio, and it does all of our processing for our broadcast, which ties into our audio console and our audio room. And I will show you that in a moment. Um, but I'll show you kind of back here from a cabling perspective, because we put a lot of attention into that. Um, Green is all video, blue is network, uh, orange is, is special network. Um, we really try to keep things clean in here. And um, we have these troughs that make them take it up here to our ladder. Uh, we have video going all throughout the building. Like I said, some of these go to the student room where we actually have a spot for a camera to plug in uh, and then network. We actually had to add these pipes. Um, I had a disagreement with a volunteer who thought we should put more piping here. And I was like, nah, I think we're fine. And you know, I thought this, box would be enough for all of our pipes coming in and um, well you saw who won he was right we needed more pipe so we had to add those pipes there um, and to fit all of our, our cabling because you run a lot of cable when you do projects like this just especially because this wasn't just a this room it was the entire building really but we will leave the server room we're actually going to be putting a door here and I said we're, the thing with projects is the trim work is so hard like we have a speaker here to get audio in this room we do have a plan to put more speakers here but I'll take you into 
Oop, why is the focus? There we go. Um, to take you into our audio room. So it's kind of a mess in here right now because we're also using this for podcasting. But this is our audio room. We have an MVD2. That's what we also have one at front of house. Great console. Um, a display back here for them to see what's going on. HS8 for our speakers. Uh, to the left, we have a Mac Mini uh, that does recording. It runs um, Reaper for recording. It's a DAW software, similar to Logic, but it ties in really well to Waves. Um, so we use that. Uh, this desk was custom built by Matt Baker, the same guy who did that desk. And we literally set up our equipment on the ground. I took some tape and taped around it, and that was the outline for the desk. And he built it to spec. Uh, that guy's just a headphone amp. And these are really helpful meters. You know, in the house, it's really easy to know your levels. But for broadcast, what's challenging and what happens a lot is people get excited during worship. They crank up the worship in the mix. And then because they don't want to hear the teaching as loud, they turn it down. Well, the viewer at home needs it to be at the same level consistently. And so we use these to help with that. And you can change that. That's a black magic device as well. Over here, though, is where the true magic happens. And I could spend hours uh, talking with this about this. Um, I actually, while I helped design this, to actually set this up and, and get the audio tuned in and really figure out what plugins we had to use, we had an incredible volunteer who is actually now leaving in a couple weeks to go to school uh, to be an audio engineer, um, really help us figure out our sound and dial things in, figure out what plugins we needed. Um, you know, hooking this up is actually really easy, believe it or not. It's the setting, it's figuring out, you know, how to tune everything, figuring out what plugins you're gonna use, that's hard. But we use Waves for pretty much everything. We use, we use Auto-Tune. Um, you know, you can see kind of our stack on, I think these are our vocal channel. Yeah, vocal channels. So these are our stack on our vocal channels. Um, these are actually touch screens, although I don't have them plugged in for touch right now. Why is autofocus not? There we go. Um, and we have, so there's your two just Dell touch screens that tie back into there. And then they connect to the console over this Waves card right here. Um, and really we're using the console for levels or using it for some basic EQ, uh, sometimes some compression, but really everything else. I think, oh, we also have some reverb channels is happening on waves. And um, for the most part, our engineers can come in and just mix and they don't have to mess with waves too much. Um, and so we use that. And then also we use this room for recording podcast. Uh, so these are just some SM7Bs. I have some cloud uh, risers over there. Our cloud lifters over there. Uh, this actually used to be just storage. Uh, so did the server room and it worked out really well. Our builders never planned on having this facility up here, but it just worked out. I'm gonna turn that music off real quick. So actually work. Where is that coming from? There we go. So just pull that down. Um, a good note with broadcast, something that's really important is to use your DCAs. Um, you know, in the house, if I mute a channel, you really can't tell. Um, but when you're listening on headphones or in your car, you really can tell. And so rather than mute, you know, the instrument just, it's tempting to reach over and hit the mute groups and go boop, boop, boop. Um, you don't want to do that. You want to convert the DCAs and you want to bring those down. So really program your DCA as well and use those correctly. You can definitely tell when our engineers who are usually used to mixing front of house come over here and use the mute groups. That's a big no-no. So um, that is pretty much our control room. Um, if you have any more specific questions, definitely feel free to reach out. Um, uh, Shoot me an email. We can a Zoom chat maybe. Give you a FaceTime tour. Um, it's a lot of complexity, but like I kind of said in the email, um, complexity is something that I view as if it's necessary. Um, I'm all about complexity because it allows us to do more. But with complexity comes more training. It comes more things that could fail. And for us, we had to find that balance. And I think we did. Um, but I always get excited when I can remove a piece of equipment. In fact, we're about to take out our P16s um, because we've been able to move to just wired in headphones for our uh, in-ears. So... Um, that's exciting. But yeah, um, that's our broadcast setup. If you have any more questions, I'd love to give you a tour, maybe about audio or um, if you're in town ever, stop by. But hope that helps.